What's up, YouTube? Thanks for checking out another video. My name is Philosopher the Monotone Magic Player, and this is my cat, Fury, who wants to be in the intro with me. Um, and today we're bringing you an Esper Control deck centered around the Fortel mechanic that came out with Kaldheim. But before I get into the deck tech, um, as always, if you want to skip straight to the gameplay or to the deck tech, there are timestamps down below, so you can go ahead and do that right now. Um, also, there is a deck list in the description in case you want to check out these cards more in depth, because when I go to the deck tech, I'm not going to talk about every single card. Um, in detail, I'm just going to talk about some of the key cards. Also, um, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to like the video, leave me a comment with a card or a deck that you want me to check out, and also um, <laughs> consider subscribing. Only about 90% of the, or sorry, 9% of the people watching are subscribed. 90% of y'all are not subscribed. So if you're one of those people that find yourself checking out my content time and time again, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton. And uh, with all that out of the way, and with my cat in the way, um, let me go ahead and go to the, uh, to the deck tech. So as I mentioned, this is an Esper control deck sitting around Fortel. So we're going to talk about Fortel really quickly for those of y'all that don't, or that may not be familiar with the mechanic. So as you can see to the side of the card, um, with this little Raven symbol, it says Fortel during your turn. So at sorcery speed, you may pay two generic and exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost. Now, if it's a sorcery or an instant, when you um, go to cast it for its foretell cost, you are only able to cast it when you're, when the card says, right? So if it's a sorcery, you can only cast it on your turn. If it's an instant, you can cast it whenever, um, you know, because that's what instants are. Um, now, this is really like, you know, you might be asking, why do I want to foretell, right? Um, for some cards, it's either the same amount of mana or it's cheaper. So like for this one, Doomscar, if I foretell it for two generic and then I use the foretell cost for the one generic and two white, I'm still effectively playing paying five mana, but I could now cast this turn as early as turn three, right? On turn two, I foretell it for the two generic. On turn three, I'm able to pay the foretell cost and play this card, which is much earlier than the turn five that I normally would be able to do it. That's one of the benefits. Additionally, is now it's out of your hand so for the people playing thought seize or duress or thought erasure whatever it is um they're not able to interact with this card anymore you give it a form of protection by putting it into exile there are some cards that work with exile um but not very many and they're not as common as hand disruption so that's the main reason why i wanted to run foretell i thought it was a really interesting mechanic and then i thought what kind of deck would be best and i see cards like um depart the realm raven form saw coming so like bounce effects Exile creatures or artifacts, um, counters, destroy creatures, and I said, or uh, Skull Raid lets you discard cards, so, or force your opponent to discard. And I said, you know what, that's what I'm going to build around. It's going to be a control deck, um, and that's what I picked. So we're going to highlight some of the key cards. Number one is Dream Devourer. Dream Devourer is a key card because it gives all non-land cards in your hand without foretell. It gives them foretell, um, and then it reduces their mana cost. Um, once you cast it from the um, like for the foretell cost it also allows you to pump it a little bit but we don't really worry about that too much um it's not that big a deal but this allows you to play cards that usually don't have foretell um in the deck so for me i chose bane slayer angel and i chose shark typhoon because in a control deck shark typhoon is just amazing also this allows allows shark typhoon to be played for four mana on a turn instead of six mana super good in my opinion um and I'm interested to see if y'all try it out with any other, you know, foretell mechanics or anything like that, or uh, sorry, any cards that don't have foretell, like what y'all would put in with Dream Devourer. Um, additionally, another great card um, is going to be Cosmos Charger. So Cosmos Charger, um, I only have one copy of it. As you see the sideboard, those are cards that I would add. Like I want four copies of Cosmos Charger, but for me, I won't return to this deck because I don't enjoy playing Control that much. So I just left it with the one. But this card is amazing because it makes your... Um, it allows you to play your foretell cards or put them into for like to, it allows you to foretell them. I'm sorry for one generic less. So instead of two generic mana, it becomes one, um, which just means that you can put every single card in your hand into the, into exile with that foretell cost. Um, and you can do it on any player's turn. So this allows you, instead of doing it at sorcery speed, you can now save your mana and foretell it and also answer with your instance. Like I said, you know, with saw it coming with depart the realm instead of having to hold up mana in a really awkward way so cosmos charger is a must have if you're going to run this type of deck in my opinion because it's just way too good um and as i said before if you want to see the full deck list go ahead and check it out down below it also has a um like it also has the cards in the sideboard and stuff like that so you can see everything that i was thinking about uh adding in and all that kind of stuff so 
that's it for this uh for this intro again trying to keep these a little bit shorter than usual this one might be a little bit long because i had to explain the foretell mechanic but i think it's really interesting and knowing how it works is a huge part of the deck um so again if y'all are enjoying the content like the video subscribe to the channel leave me a comment um all those good things so i can better understand what y'all want to see um if you're enjoying the video stuff like that and uh outside of the videos you can check me out on twitter you can check me out on twitch both of those are the same name philosopher um those will also be in the description if you're interested in checking me out over there so yeah thank y'all for watching the video i hope y'all have a great day and i'll see you in the next one peace come on silver black cyber i don't see very many people use the the vivian avatar this seems like a pretty shit hand if i'm being completely honest but we'll keep it <laughs> we'll keep it even though it doesn't look that great and we will drop a planes to start i mean we're probably gonna like instantly foretell a raven form oh turn timber oh i want to play that so bad but we really need the mana for this, so play like that. We will foretell. I could have technically done Bright Climb to make them think that we were just playing like uh Orzov. Swarm Shambler. Is this gonna be like a plus one plus one counter deck? Mm, not sure what kind of deck this is gonna be. Well, I mean, I guess we'll find out, so. I'd probably save Raven form for their Love Struck Beast, right? What are you gonna do? You have. Z do they have a zero cost? Like, hello? That art's pretty cool. I wanna hit them with the hello. Okay, there you go. Nice. Thank you. Um. Maybe I just foretell Skull Raid. What do y'all think? This is a sorcery. I'm not going to use it this turn, so I actually will use the temple. Island. Yeah, it gets us to five lands, which is good for Baneslayer. We foretell this. So what I'm hoping is that they play Love Struck Beast next turn. Who cares if we take two damage? We'll exile the Love Struck Beast with Raven Form. And then we could also use Skull Raid. The land is so cool. That like that just looks so awesome. Okay, so they hit us for one, which I'm assuming they're just gonna make their Swarm Shambler bigger, maybe? I'm not really sure, honestly. Um go like this. And we will foretell another Skull Raid. And then use a Skull Raid. I like Skull Raid because it's like, it's two parts, right? It's both discard and it could be card draw like late game. Because the issue with a lot of um, like hand hate type decks, they did have a zero cost. They had sort of, okay, so I don't know what kind of, what kind of deck to play, but anyways. The problem with uh, discard decks is usually that whenever you get into the late game, right? And then like their, your opponent has no cards in hand, you don't really get any advantage off of your discard cards. Hey, I think I just play that this turn instead of doing anything else. Do I need another black? I think I do actually. So I think I play the black side. Nice. Doomscar coming in clutch. I don't even know. What does Yorvo do? Oh, yeah, you do put... Oh, because you put one encounters on them. Garrick's Harbinger. Um, I mean, this is just a 5-5 five, five first strike. So that whoops that thing's ass. Is that what we do? I think we do. Let's... Yeah, let's see how that goes. Because obviously first strike will negate the uh, the death touch. I could have raven formed it. 
but I don't think it's that big a deal. We couldn't have used Poison the Cup since it has Hexproof from Black, but I think we're in a pretty good position right now. Uh, not if they look at my thing like that. Well, we are no longer in a good position. Rip. So that's definitely going to be a Raven form. They get another Yorvo. Luckily, they have no way to play it. We'll go ahead and Raven form that. We can... Can we foretell this? Yeah, we could. We can foretell this. And then uh, we can just counter the next thing that they do, which will probably be Yorvo. Um... Yeah. Pass. Yeah, I don't want Yorvo being played. I'm okay with taking one. Another Swarm Shambler, that's fine too. Now, we don't want to do anything to the Swarm Shambler because it will just create another creature for them. <laughs> They've only had one basic land. It's kind of crazy. Um, we could also do Skull Raid and just like get some card advantage a little bit. Like make them go down to zero and we would draw one. I want this to come in as a... Yeah, we'll go like that. Um, let's start with the Skull Raid. So we can draw a card also. Damn, I should have played that one. Oh well. Um... Tell both. Where's our Dream Devourer? Where's our now that we now that we have six mana and we can just hard cast Shark Typhoon? Where's that? In every other game, it's stuck to my opening hand. Oh, Yorvo. Shit. How many is that their third Yorvo? It is. Huh. <laughs> oh, you hate to see it. Let's do this first. And then we're just gonna Doom Scar again. I'm so sorry. There you go. There's a creature that we can actually play. Nice. Sorry, my friend. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I re this way I don't like playing Esper Dykes. I feel so bad about it. Oh, Scooze. Dang, that thing's gonna get big. Too bad. Uh, I'm just gonna poison the cup it. Um, yeah, we're just gonna play it like this. Do I use poison the cup? I think I do, right? Now, I could see them using the three mana just to get rid of cards in my graveyard. It won't save their scoos, but they have nothing else to do, so they might as well get rid of cards in my graveyard. At least that's what I would be doing. Okay, yeah. They get rid of Doomscar... They get rid of Bane Slayer. What else are they getting rid of? They get rid of the other Doom Scar. Okay. Now we have Scry. Oh, thank God we had Scry. Holy shit. That would have been bad. <laughs> That would have been so bad. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and start swinging. Two damage at a time. Another land. They go ahead and play that, but they can't attack, right? We foretell this. We don't care about Love Struck Beast. Actually, do we? Okay. Odds that they're like chances that they're gonna have a one cost. They already played Swarm Shambler twice. I mean they could just have other Love Struck Beasts in the deck, and I really don't want to take five. Actually. No, because we can just counter it. Yeah, if they play like a one cost creature, we'll probably just counter it. That would be the one of the worst ways to spend. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that it was going to be a one cost creature, even though like the odds of them getting that exact card are so low. Now, I think I might actually just Raven form. Do I want to? No, because it's not a threat. 
At the current moment, it's not a threat, right? So I don't think there's any reason to. If they drop a 1-1, one, one, then it would become a threat. Huh. I don't like that. What do you have in hand? Nothing? Okay, that works for me. We'll act like we have an instant up or something, even though it's just our 8th land. <laughs> okay, they... Oh, shoot! Turn Timber. Okay. Oh my god. How many lands are we playing in this deck? Yeah, we have to get rid of that Kazandu. I'm sure they'll block one. That bird... Oh, that bird does matter for them! Oh, shoot. I gave him a 1-1 one, one creature. <laughs> I gave them a 1-1. One, one. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um. Uh. This is awkward. Whatever. Swamp, I guess. Oh, this is so awkward. They could actually just win. What do we need? What do we need to get? Um. Uh, shark Typhoon? Would that work? If I just make like a massive shark? I don't know what its cycling cost is. Oh shit. Uh. Uh. What are the odds? We lose. Behold the multiverse. We have to. It's a good thing we have a bunch of lands. Poison the cup. Is that any good? I don't think it is. Um. We take it anyways. We play this white. I don't care. Uh, Do we live next turn? We do. We can kill. Okay. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We... We don't even have to foretell, really. Do we just kill it on our turn? Let's foretell. Um, we can't foretell that because we won't have enough for this. We pass combat. Damn, this game is way closer than I thought it would be. Yeah. What if they have another Primal Might? Because didn't they use that earlier? Oh, it's a Sorcery. Okay, thank God. <gasps> Why'd they do that? They actually did it. Do you think they have something to buff their 5-5? Five five? Part the realm? Uh, to part the realm is kind of good. I don't need a land. Okay. You should not have swung with those two 1-1s because you had me dead. <gasps> Wait. Did we do it? I'm going to main phase. Behold the multiverse. No. Ooh, Bane Slayer. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. If I do Bane Slayer, can I do Bane Slayer? I can. If I do Bane Slayer, I still have blockers with the Vengeful Reaper, right? Does Primal Might give Trample? No, it just fights. Does this have Trample? No. We're being greedy because I could have departed the realm, right? I'm only going to swing with one. No, I'm going to swing a zero. No attacks. Reason I'm swinging with zero is because I can't win this turn anyways. I could definitely win next turn. Hmm. We're going to take this incredibly cautiously. Okay. We win anyways. <laughs> but I was really scared that... Like if I would have swung with... Like it they would have pumped in and given it trample or something. And I wouldn't have been able to deal with it. I don't know. I was just really scared because that game was going so well and then it wasn't going well at all and i thought i was gonna lose after doom scarring twice and all these poison the cups and stuff like that <laughs> i thought we were still gonna lose um i think i'm gonna keep it to those two games because that's like about 20 minutes so uh one game really good one game not so good um but overall i mean it's a really fun deck like i think that cosmos charger is like really important um we're gonna get rid of all these because i just got those um cosmos charger to me is really important because it lets you 
foretell on other people's turns so you can hold up instants and stuff like that um instead of having to foretell during your turn um it also makes everything cheaper obviously dream devourer is an amazing card because it gives everything foretell so you can foretell things like your shark typhoon or your bane slayers or whatever um we didn't really get to see any of these maybe i should be playing more nico defies destiny it seems not that good but honestly it's it's i think it is going to be really good for the deck you gain a lot of life um it helps you ramp and you can get back your foretell cards so i think maybe i like drop mystic reflection and mystic reflection is another form of like control right and i'm sure i'm going to say that in the intro but i think that overall this deck is a lot of fun i think you could play around more with the dream devourer thing of like what you foretell and what you don't but um yeah anyways uh thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video um let me know if you make a version of this deck if you play it or anything like that i would love to hear how it does for you and uh yeah as always like the video subscribe to the channel leave me a comment um, down below with cards that you want me to check out or decks that you want me to build and uh, as always i will see you in the next video have a great day peace